Hey guys, it's Charlie from engineerexcel.com. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Excel solver to perform a constrained optimization and to maximize the flow rate in an open channel. So stay tuned. Okay, we're going to solve a problem today where we want to maximize the flow rate through an open channel with a trapezoidal shape. And the geometry of the open channel is defined by three variables. The width at the top, t, the height, h, and the angle of the sidewalls, theta. So in order to maximize the flow rate through this open channel, what we really need to do is maximize the hydraulic radius of the geometry. The hydraulic radius of the channel is defined as the area, cross-sectional area that is, divided by the wetted perimeter of the channel. Now there is one wrinkle here and that is that we want to ensure that the area of the open channel is a constant. So basically we're trying to find the optimum relationship between these three inputs that's going to give us two things, maximum hydraulic radius and a constant cross-sectional area. In Excel, I've already set up a place for our inputs and our outputs. And the first input that we're going to add is the width at the top. The second is going to be the height of the open channel. The wall angle is the third. And the target area, which is going to be a constraint in the optimization, is the fourth input that we're adding into the spreadsheet. For now, we're just going to put some placeholder values in here because we're going to ultimately use the solver to optimize for these values. And of course, as usual, we want to put units in there just to make sure that it's clear what those are. Now for the outputs. The first thing we're going to calculate is the width at the bottom of this trapezoidal channel, followed by the cross-sectional area. Then we're going to calculate the wetted perimeter of the channel, and finally the hydraulic radius. To calculate the width at the bottom of the channel, we're going to use this formula where the width is defined as the width at the top minus 2 times the height of the channel times the tangent of 90 minus theta. And now remember the tangent function in Excel uses radians, so we have to use that radians function first to convert the calculation in degrees to radians. And of course, you know, I missed one of my parentheses, so I got a little error that popped up, but no worries, we can accept that and move on. Now you'll notice that the width that's calculated right now is zero, and that's because I've set my width at the top to be two meters, my height to be one meter, and my wall angle to be 45. So those sidewalls are coming together to form a perfect point at the bottom of this channel, and rather than a trapezoid, I actually have a triangular channel. So if I go ahead and change the wall angle, we'll end up with a trapezoid again that has a defined or a finite bottom width. Next we'll calculate the cross-sectional area. And that's a pretty simple calculation for a trapezoid. It's just the height of the trapezoid times the bottom width plus the top width divided by 2. Next we'll calculate the wetted perimeter, which is probably the hardest calculation in this entire spreadsheet. It's defined as the width at the bottom plus 2 times the square root of the quantity t minus b over 2 squared. plus the height squared. And so for this particular geometry, we end up with a bottom width of 1.27 meters, a cross-sectional area of 1.64 meters squared, and a wetted perimeter of 3.4 meters. Let's finish this up by calculating the hydraulic radius. The hydraulic radius is just simply the area divided by the wetted perimeter, and we end up with a value of about 0.48 meters. Just to clean up the spreadsheet, I'm going to go ahead and put the units in right away. And now we can move on to the optimization. Now to perform this optimization, we're going to use Solver, which is found in the Data tab, way over on the right-hand side. When you click that, the Solver dialog opens and we can set up the Solver parameters. First, we'll set our objective, which is to maximize the hydraulic radius, because that's going to give us the maximum flow rate through this open channel. 
Now the max has already been selected, so we don't have to do anything there. We can go straight into selecting the variable cells that we want to change in order to maximize the hydraulic radius. That's the top width, the height, and the wall angle as shown in the diagram. Now in order to make sure that we've got a constraint that our cross-sectional area of our channel is equal to our target area, we're going to add a constraint through Solver. So we want the cross-sectional area that's calculated as a function of the input geometry to be equal to our constraint value or our target area which is 3 meters squared. So let's click OK and now that constraint is going to be added into the constraint window in the Solver dialog. With everything set up we can go ahead and click Solve and we get a result. Now you'll notice that the cross-sectional area in the outputs is equal to the cross-sectional target area that we set at the inputs. That's a result of Solver holding that constraint that we specified. We've also gotten results for the top width of the channel, the height of the channel, and the wall angle. The wall angle ends up being 60 degrees, which is exactly the angle that you would have uh, between sidewalls in a hexagon. So it looks like what we've ended up with is a result where the optimum dimensions for the channel cause it to form one half of a hexagon. But let's try that theory out and see if we get a constant relationship if we set a different target area. We'll change that target area to a value of 5. Now you can see that our target area and our cross-sectional area don't match up because we haven't run Solver yet. So we'll run Solver again and we end up with the exact same angle of the sidewalls as well as a very similar relationship in terms of the ratio between the top width and the height. This video has been brought to you by EngineerExcel.com. If you'd like to learn more about how to solve your tough engineering problems in Excel, sign up for our free Excel training for engineers using the link in the description below, or subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and talk to you later.